Hey guys, I wanted to go ahead and go over some of the new features that are included with X Live Card and actually how to navigate the software portion of the board. So the first thing that we're going to do is check out the routing section. So go ahead and hit routing up on the top hand of the board and we'll see that there's a new little portion down here that says inputs, record and play. And so this gives us the option to change the inputs locally on the board when we are in either record mode or playback mode. So with the X Live card, it gives us the option to automatically switch between recording and live, uh, sorry, recording and playback. So when we are under recording, then we can choose that when this is lit, we can choose our inputs from the board. So if we do have a digital snake, we'll want to go ahead and select uh, AES 50 and then our inputs here. And so we can see that I have local 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 24, and 25 through 32. Now, if I was wanting to go ahead and play back from the SD card and actually put those channels back into the board automatically, we can go ahead and rotate this to the right and press. And now this is now the board is in playback mode. So if you do happen to do this during a show, you will mute all of the audio coming through left through your local inputs if you have something selected other than your local inputs. So if you are in a mode where you are not wanting this to happen, I would recommend setting all of your inputs to be local local or AES 50, depending on which system you're using, and then have that set up for the entire time that you are doing that until you are ready to go back to a uh, virtual sound check mode, which we're going to show you here. So this allows us to, in their, under playback, pull from the card 1 through 32, and that's where I want to play from. So when I'm playing back a session from the SD card on the X Live card, I actually want those channels to go into my board. So we're going to leave that section. The next thing I want to show you is the card out. So this is actually where the recording is going to be pulling from for the SD card and the USB side of the X Live. So if you do happen to have AES 50 set up with uh, a digital digital stage box up on stage, you will want to go ahead and select that in the routing on card out here. But since I'm not using that, I'm just using local inputs, we're going to leave it on local 1 through 32. The next portion that we want to check out of the board is our setup menu. So when we click setup, we can go ahead and tab all the way over to card. Once we get here, this is the main navigation portion of our X Live card. And so we can see that we have a whole bunch of options here, which we can get to by going to our second layer by pressing the layer down button. And so we can use our playback config. So we can either play back from the SD card or we can play back from the USB slot of the X Live card. So we can actually designate which portion we want to play back from. So if you were wanting to use the X Live card as a backup to your recording on your laptop, then you would go ahead and set that up to be USB interface, and that way any time you go and play from your computer, you would be playing back into the card. Next thing is this channel routing. That's the portion back here in the home tab of our routing page, this little portion right here. And so we can actually have the card automatically change this by having automatic selected, or we can go manually change this between recording and playback by just selecting one and pressing this. The next portion right here gives us our ability to change the multi-channel input and output capabilities of the card. So if you weren't wanting to have all 32 channels recorded and being played back, you can change this to something other than the 32 in, 32 out. For most standard users, they are just going to be using the 32 in, 32 out. That way, we can record all 32 tracks coming into the board and be able to play back all 32 tracks into the board to do a virtual sound check. The next thing allows us to select between SD card 1 and SD card 2. Now, if you were using two different uh, SD cards at two different times, uh, you could place a SD card from, say, week 1 of your tour into the back of the board, and you can go and select the SD card 2 and playback sessions from that. Currently, I just have one SD card in here, and so we have SD1 selected. Now, if you are recording, you can have two SD cards in the back of your board. I recommend that you stick with 32 gigabyte SD cards, which are the SDHC, and have the uh, class 10. So make sure it's a good quality high speed card, and then you won't have any issues with playback. Now, when you do fill up one card of 32 gigs, and then you, it will automatically transfer over to the second card that is installed in the X Live. The next portion down here is our SD recording. So if you were wanting to record 32 channels, you would have 32 channels selected, or 16 or 8. 
The next portion we have is sessions on SD cards. So if you had multiple sessions recorded, it would not only put the date, but it would also put the time. And so this is year, month, date, and then your hours, minutes, and seconds. And there is no way of modifying the name of that. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe they'll release that in a future update. Markers in the session are pretty interesting. So when we have a full session, which we can consider to be a full show, we can actually place markers in the beginning of our songs. So say song one, we can go ahead and place one marker. And then when song two starts, we can go ahead and place another marker. Song three, same thing. And that way we can actually jump between our songs. And if we are just doing some virtual sound check, we can go and navigate through our different songs to update, say, our snippets inside the show or scenes inside the show. Let's go ahead and jump back up to tab one. We have our uh, playback control here. So we have our stop, play, pause, and record. So if we were wanting to go ahead and record, all you'd have to do is just press record, and then it's going to prepare a new session and start recording. Now say that you just started a session, but the band wasn't ready and you needed to go change something up on stage, you can go ahead and simply press stop. It'll finalize the session. Now say we wanted to go ahead and delete that and not have that be on the card. We can actually press our utility button and that'll pop up a hidden menu. Now the utility portion of the menu only pops up when we are not playing and not recording. So it has to be in a standalone state which is stopped. Once we are there, we can actually have a couple different portions of this. So we can either format SD card one or if we have SD card two selected selected down here, we can actually format SD card do through the utility menu. But another thing that we can do is we can go navigate to our session that we want to delete, and we can just go ahead and press delete session, and then we can confirm with a yes. Same thing with the markers in the session. So if we had multiple markers in this and we wanted to delete one of them, all we'd have to do is just go navigate to the marker that we want to delete and press delete. So once we have a session recorded, simply go ahead and select the session that we want to play, and then just press play. Now that I have my session playing, I want to go ahead and add a couple markers. For this song, I want to just mark where my verse one and, ver and my chorus start. So we're just going to go ahead and wait for that to happen. Go. That's as simple as it is for adding a marker. We just press add marker. Tempted, but your love ran after me. You gave me what I needed, stole away my secrets. How could I deserve? So the chorus is gonna be coming up here soon, so I'm gonna go ahead and press add marker one more time when the chorus starts. Now, if I was wanting to go back to the beginning of the chorus, all I'd have to do is just press select marker. Or if I was wanting to go back to the verse, so say there you were wanting to tune in the toms really nicely. Basically, you can just add a marker where your tom run starts and just keep pressing this to go back to that. Does it sound like a broken record yet? Now, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to post below, but I am very excited as to the ease of setup and the flexibility that this gives you to not only have a full virtual sound check machine inside of your physical board, but also being able to duplicate recordings on not only the XLive card, but also have a duplicate recording on your computer. So thank you so much for watching.